Hello guys, welcome to another SOAP UI tutorial from rcvacademy.com. In this tutorial, we are going to continue with the automation testing of REST API and understand how you can utilize the property transfer to transfer the dynamic value that you are getting from the, the response of the first request into the request of the second REST API. And this is very fundamental and very important to understand for the reason because um, whenever you are doing uh, API testing there will be like m multiple APIs which uh, will require uh, the transfer of dynamic property from one response message to another request message and that's how you go ahead and build your end-to-end -end test cases so uh, the fundamental will still remain same. It doesn't matter how many uh, APIs or how many REST APIs, you, uh, REST services you have. Um, you will utilize similar concept to automate your end-to-end -end test cases. So in the previous tutorial, just to summarize, what we have seen is we have created a shuffle deck uh, request, uh, a test step in shuffle deck. And then we had created a property transfer and also we had created a uh, draw cards using the highlighted request right using the highlighted um, draw cards API wherein if you see the request I have hard coded the resource with the deck ID okay and that was the reason uh, that this whole test was passing because shuffle deck was doing uh, a, a shuffle and was providing a deck id so if we run this and you see the json response you will see this deck id is not similar to the deck id that, that is hard coded in the in this particular request right so what we have to do as part of property transfer or any uh, api testing is uh, there will be dynamic values from one response which is basically the deck id if you see here that we, we are interested in passing to the another request which is draw cards and pass the same deck id and then draw cards from the same deck id which we have shuffled previously okay so like in cards game you you shuffle the card deck and then you have to draw draw the cards from the same card deck so you can't just draw cards from any other card deck if you are playing card game using using one deck right so you have to shuffle the cards and then you have to draw cards from the same card deck and if you are passing the deck id that means we are uh, drawing the cards from the same uh, card deck okay now to do this what we'll do is so since this request has the hard-coded um, value in it or in the resource we have hard coded the deck id we need to make it a parameter okay so let me open the documentation so draw a card if you see um, this request has deck id which should be the parameter okay so this is the deck id which should be sort of parameter and we should be passing the dynamic values here let me copy this whole request and go back to soap ui now I'll import um, the REST service and here you can see now I have the deck ID. So what I'll do is I'll parameterize it in the resource. So to do that, just um, highlight that uh, the deck ID and I'll say dynamic deck ID. All right. In the curly braces so now if you click on um, the add parameter so now you will see the add parameter so you click anywhere on the window this parameter will uh, automatically get added here in the window okay now you have to specify the default value I'll just leave it as blank okay just click OK because this is the dynamic value and uh, which we, we are interested in getting from the request uh, or from the first shuffle deck response. Okay, 
So now I have imported this request or uh, this request for the draw cards. Now in the test steps, what I'll do is I'll add a test step, rest step, and I'll say draw cards and select the draw cards where we have utilized or where we have provided this parameter dynamic tech ID and select that particular request and click OK. All right. Now you can see you have the parameter dynamic deck ID and that is defined as the template. So as soon as you parameterize the deck ID in the URL, it will change the style to the template and not to the query. Okay. Now in the template, we can update these values. Okay. Let me close all these windows. So now we are done with the request part. The next step is to do the property transfer and um, verify the property transfer is happening and the value is getting populated. The deck ID is uh, getting populated in the value section here. Okay. So let me add a property transfer step as well. And what are we interested in transferring? So we are, let me change it to deck ID. So I'm adding the transfer, the name of the transfer. We are interested in transferring the deck ID. And from where we are interested, we are interested to draw uh, the source will be the, oops, let me close this. Let me move this property transfer here and open this again because we are interested in moving the deck ID from shuffle deck response to the request of draw cards. Okay. So from the shuffle deck, which property? We are interested in property response and JSON path. Okay. Because the response is the JSON path. And if you see this response here, what is the value? So basically the, if we just say deck ID from here, it will pick the value from the JSON path. So it will pick this dynamic value from the JSON path. You just need to provide the deck ID. Okay. So I'll copy that, close it and go to property transfer again. Just provide the deck ID. Now, where do you want to pass this deck ID, the dynamic deck ID to the draw cards request and to the property dynamic deck ID. All right. So once you do dynamic deck ID, it will automatically pass the value to dynamic deck ID. Okay. Let's try and run it and see if it runs successfully. Yes, it did. So you see the transferred values is WQ8F. Um, H uh, and some other values there. So let's see if that's the value. Yes. So it got populated here in this time, uh, draw cards request you can see and even in the uh, resource. So if, if I open shuffle deck and go to response, that's the value that has been picked up for the deck ID and passed to the draw cards parameter dynamic deck ID. Okay, and now if you run this test case end to end, it will pick the response, uh, the deck ID from the response of shuffle deck and pass to the draw cards. So let me close this property transfer now because it's working successfully. Close it and open the draw card. So there are no assertions. Let me add an assertion there, uh, just a compliance, I'll say valid HTTP status codes and I'll say 200. All right. And that's pretty much it. So we have done our simple end to end test case for the rest API. And what we are doing here is we are getting the deck ID from the shuffle deck response, um, JSON path to and transferring it to the request of the draw cards. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run this whole request and see end to end test whether it passes successfully. All right. So it got passed. Let's see the logs and understand a little bit more. Okay. So shuffle deck, uh, you, you can see that it took 950 milliseconds and then 
it shows the time as well so if you open the response or open the log message and double click on the steps that you see here you will get this particular window message viewer okay now request and go to response you see h3 a i y okay let's memorize this and see that if this is the deck id that has been passed to draw cards as well so property transfer got successful open draw cards in the response message and go down and you see h3 a i y right so this is the deck id from where it pulled the two cards okay so now we have done our end-to-end -end test case successfully we have uh, shuffle the deck we have got the deck id the dynamic deck id from the response message of shuffle deck use the property transfer and passed it to the draw cards automatically without any manual intervention and now with just one click of this particular test case you can run your end-to-end -end test for shuffle deck um, shuffle and draw cards deck now the same concept you can utilize in any of your rest api testing in your organization it doesn't matter you have 10 apis you have 100 apis that are there in the uh, organization and you want to automate end-to-end um, -end which are utilizing or there is a test case which is utilizing 25 apis and requires end-to-end -end testing so you can use similar concept of property transfer and get the dynamic values from first api from the response of the first api and pass it on to the second request and you can sti stitch these test cases uh, and form your end-to-end -end test so hope you like the video in further tutorial we'll understand uh, a bit more about the property transfer in the rest api thank you very much for watching